Time to get a check on the markets now. Central Valley Ag's Luke Beckman came by the studio on Thursday. We talked about the outlook for corn and soybeans and what to look out for heading into harvest. But I began by asking what he's seeing in fields as he travels around the state. The crop certainly passes the eye test. Uh, as you talk to agronomists and folks that are walking the fields, uh, a little more variability just with the spring that we had. Uh, I do think the crop's a little bit behind. I think that wouldn't surprise anybody. Um, as you talk to folks, it kind of looks like we're on track for like an early October uh, kind of black layer date for corn, you know, so uh, a little bit behind and just depends on this September that we're going to have on how we finish. You know, we're starting to get into that post Labor Day conversation and when we come back next week, it's going to start to be about frost dates and those mm -hmm. types of things. So watch South Dakota, average frost dates there and some of those northern states uh, gets to be about the middle of September. So uh, that's going to be kind of the next thing on the market's mind. And how's corn basis looking right now as we prepare to wrap up summer? Yeah, corn basis has really been the story. I mean, really in June it took off. It's been firm all summer. You know, the cash market's inverted by as much as 40 cents in some of the biggest markets in the state uh, as you compare, you know, September delivery or spot delivery versus what it's going to be at harvest. And so uh, the market, if, if producers are sitting on old crop corn, the market wants that now rather than watching the farmer carry that into new crop. It really raises the question, Troy, uh, there's conflicting viewpoints here on what the USDA is telling us on the old crop carryout, which is 2.3 billion bushels, versus what the cash market is telling us, which is there's not 2.3 billion bushels out here. If there were, we wouldn't have to pay the types of numbers that we are. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, does that come to light uh, in any future USDA reports? Uh, it may not. It may simply mean that uh, the grain is in tight hands because well, farmers might be bullish. And of course, uh, corn base is looking good. Soybeans, different story though, right? It's really the, the same, same song, different uh, verse uh, at this point. You know, we're really seeing a lot of business being done out of Brazil and Argentina still for October business. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of soybean cargoes getting sold this week uh, for those October uh, shipment periods. And so uh, I think they're going to exhaust Brazilian resources and what they have for supplies uh, through that October shipment period. What it's going to do is it's going to open up November, December, and January, really where the U.S. is uh, going to be the only game in town. They're going to have to do some business here uh, before in March. That really gets to be gut slot harvest in Brazil, uh, where Brazil is going to have that chance again to you know, be the main supplier. Any sort of uh, prognostication on price forecast for soybeans? Well, I, I think it really just depends on how this crop wants to finish. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's no mystery we've been cool. Uh, what's what is the frost date going to be is that going to impact yield we certainly had the rain you know in the last sure. several weeks to fill pods so if you were able to pull a few bushels off the national yield that's certainly going to help shrink the carry out a little bit give beans an opportunity to get back above nine dollars no futures um, with basis where it's at across the state you're looking at eight dollar plus cash off the combine and how producers factor in their mfp uh, program yeah, payments uh, yeah, you know, what's that net price, you know, at the farm? So uh, I think there's some opportunities for beans. It's just you're going to have to impact the yield a little bit. And just as the combines run, how is the yield stacking up versus what the USDA gave us in August? Okay, so uh, let's shift gears, talk about trade for a minute. First, the good news, new trade deal with Japan agreed to in principle. What commodities are the big winners here? Well, I, I think that's the key point that you just mentioned there in principle. Uh, not a lot of details associated with the, the Japanese trade agreement. The U.S. supplies Japan with a lot of ag products already. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of a good-natured uh, story, I suppose, sure. to maybe highlight what we're already doing a good job with. So uh, I think it's basically principle and kind of a framework uh, deal, more or less. Not a lot of details being released at this point. Then on the other side of the coin, China continuing to be an issue. Can you give us any optimism as far as that goes? I think it's a continuation of what we've seen. You know, we see these blips, tweets that um, maybe there's some light at the end of the tunnel. Troy, I really feel that we're far enough along in the process that 2020 is too close uh, for China to feel like they need to make a deal. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, there's a deadline on the U.S. side for when the, the presidency, the term runs out. Mm -hmm. And on the Chinese side, there is no deadline. Yeah. Uh, so I think that that gives 
China a little bit of leverage probably in this situation to say we're just willing to wait and see what happens November of 2020. So uh, I feel like it's just going to continue to drag out. Very true. And Luke, as we let you go, any marketing advice, risk management tips that you want to leave us with today? Well, I, I think we're in that lull right here pre-harvest. I think we're working on hammering out a pre-harvest low. Uh, once that happens, we'll look for retracement levels in both corn and beans as selling targets for producers. Uh, on corn right now, we'd really look at the gap that was created after the August 12th report, which is going to put your first uh, target level around 390 December futures. Uh, and on the soybean side, uh, we just need to confirm a bottom before we can really make any of those predictions. But look for a pre-harvest low to be hammered out sometime before we get going with harvest. And then from there, it's about how do we rebuild this thing? Uh, where does the market want to retrace to? And how do the yields start to stack up as the combines get into the field?